Hey everybody, uh, this is my brackish tank and as a lot of you know I've been talking about breaking it down and setting up a new tank. In fact I already have the new tank set up, it's just a matter of letting it get cycled in and there's a few other things I'm going to do before I move the fish over. In the meantime I still have to keep maintaining this tank and I have to keep on top of all this red uh, cyanobacteria, this red slime cyanobacteria that's in there. When I came down this morning I noticed that one big chunk of it in the back is actually starting to peel off. You can see all those bubbles. Those bubbles are actually oxygen that's trapped underneath the mat and it begins to lift up. And If you've ever seen a pond or a swamp or something you see those big mats and nasty green scum that float to the surface. Uh, that's green cyanobacteria and it's more or less the same thing that's happening here. Uh, let me see if I can zoom in on that and give you a little better look at it. That chunk right there is one big sheet that is peeled off of a rock in the back and is starting to like fold up into the air. Let's see if we can get a little better look at it from this angle. See how it's sort of come off of that rock and it's beginning to peel up. And all of this is just nasty sheets of the cyanobacteria and you can even see it on the substrate in the bottom it also looks like it's getting ready to lift up and start peeling away from the bottom and you can see by the way the gobies just lie on top of it it's not harmful to the fish or anything it just looks disgusting and it's constant maintenance it has not been long at all since I've had to get in here and do this so I decided today that since we're going to be breaking this tank down eventually, I may as well use the opportunities I can, uh, you know, just to do something with it while I've got it. So today we're going to do a head cam video and we're going to get in there and we're going to start vacking out some of that uh, red slime. And then I think what I'm going to do is actually treat the tank with some of the red slime cyanobacteria treatment that I have and we're going to see after I clean it and then treat it how much can we beat it back. I've done this before and I know it's not going to go away but it might beat it back far enough that it won't keep getting on top of me uh, for the remaining few weeks before I go ahead and transfer these fish over to my new tank. So let me get started and then we will go ahead and get in there with the head cam and we'll start doing a vac and we'll see what it looks like pulling some of that stuff out of there. pretty easy to get out of here. All you got to do is sort of gently rub it and that knocks it loose. You can see as I've said it sort of comes up in sheets. It's already starting to come up back here. And I'm not trying to completely clear the tank out. I'm just trying to stay on top of it because this is going to be broken down soon. I'm just, you know, again, I'm not trying to eradicate this. I used to try, and I don't know what I was doing wrong, I don't know if uh, I really do need to use the erythromycin or emycin antibiotic in here to kill it off, because it is a bacteria, so antibiotics will certainly kill it, but I have tried the Ultralife products for the red slime, and it does kill it, and it does beat it back pretty badly. And in fact, once I'm done with this, and we're going to physically remove a bunch of it today, I'm then going to start treating it uh, for the red slime, and we'll just do a video showing how to use that to treat. And then from there, uh, we'll see how much of it we can beat back. And that should be the last time I have to deal with this before I actually break the tank down and change it over. And I hope you guys can see this well enough. It's hard to look down and see what I'm doing. It's easier to look through the side but this might come out a little clearer on video. And I do have to worry about picking any of the gobies up with this. It's not a gravel vac. There's no safety valve or anything in it. It's just an open tube. So if I get too close to a goby and don't notice it, I will draw them right out of there. So what we're going to do first is get much of this out as we can with this smaller hose without really filling that bucket up completely and then I'm going to use a larger hose and we're going to suck the stuff up off the gravel in the back because that will actually 
uh, tends to clog the smaller hose as the gravel comes up with it. So we're going to just go ahead and switch over to a larger hose and then I can pull some of the gravel out along with some of the bacteria. And I can even pull it off of the back wall to some extent. Just keep my eye on the bucket and make sure I'm not overflowing it. That poor little butter bean's going to get upset. He doesn't like it when I get in here and do stuff in his tank. See, I can maybe try to pick a little bit of this up. See, I just went ahead and clogged my hose with a uh, snail shell. So I'm going to call that good for this hose, and we will go ahead and uh, hit it again a little more and try to get some stuff off of the bottom uh, with the larger hose. All right, now this one sucks stuff out a lot quicker. So this will help me get some of these dead uh, snail shells out of here. If you just saw that little bright piece of purple vanish, that is remnants of my early days in fish keeping. We probably all go through a period where we have brightly colored gravel. And I know I certainly did. And if you look very carefully here and there, you will still see remnants of it. Boy, there's a near right snail shell I haven't seen in a long time. not moving through very quickly anymore. I'm assuming I've got a clog somewhere in the line. There we go. tough in the back because I can't really see what I'm doing and the trick is is you don't want to grab too much gravel at once you just try to want to pull the bacteria off the surface and not bring too much gravel with it problem is the bacteria grabs a hold of the gravel and pulls it up with it Ooh. almost got a uh, goby there I didn't even see him fortunately he darted out of range before I got him Well, I think other than some of the stuff on the glass, I've probably got as much as I'm going to be able to get that I can see. Actually, let me get a little more back here. And we're going to call that good. All right, let me get that refilled and we'll do a little bit of a look at afterwards and we'll do a little bit of a discussion and a recap. All right, here we are at the end of the process, at least as much as I'm going to do for now. Uh, I did get in and wipe the glass down a little bit, not too much. As soon as you start wiping, the stuff starts peeling off and floating all around the tank and going everywhere. So I cleaned that up as best I could and then I went in once again with my actual gravel vac, the one that's got the larger opening to the smaller hose, and I was able to use that to just sort of vac out a lot of the loose um, cyanobacteria that was floating around in sheets and clumps around in the tank since all of the disturbance that I caused. So my next step is going to be to let the tank settle down, let the heater do its thing, and bring the tank back up to temperature because my reservoir is uh, room temperature and the tank is a little warmer than that. So we're going to let Butterbean settle down and relax a little bit. You can see him in the back there. He's always a little flustered after a water change or after I've been in the tank. He doesn't really know what to make of what's going on. So I'm going to give him an hour or two to calm down. And then we are going to actually treat the tank with the slime, the red slime cyanobacteria treatment. But that will be for another video. That's a two-day process, so it'll take a few days to wind up shooting the whole entire process. So make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss it when I do. Uh, put that video out in a few days. I'm thinking within the week I should have that done. And I also need to make up another batch of brackish water now that I've done the work on this tank. And I realized today that I've never actually done a video showing you how I make up the brackish water. It's not a big deal. It's a scoop of salt into a bucket of water and then I stir it and that's pretty much all there is to it. Uh, but I can usually make a long-winded video out of just about anything. 
So go ahead and subscribe. That way you won't miss any of the stuff I got coming up. And we will do more work on this tank. And eventually it's all going to be for naught because we're going to move him into his new tank anyway. But it'll be fun to see how much uh, damage we can do to all that uh, red slime in there. It'll be interesting to see what actual impact in a direct before and after type effect we're going to get uh, with the video I'm going to shoot. So once again, make sure you're subscribed. That way you won't miss it. So thanks for watching this one. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that was a little bit helpful to somebody. And I will see you real soon on the next one.